When one thinks of painting, you rarely ever ponder its association with quantum physics. However, just like the world of electrons, things begin to look a whole lot different when you take a closer look. That's why today we'll be answering the question, how did cubism help Niels Bohr? First off, let's get some background on who Niels Bohr is. Niels Heinrich David Bohr was a Danish physicist born in 1885. People were mainly first introduced to Niels Bohr through his initial model of the atom. In 1913, Niels Bohr published a series of three papers called On the Constitution of Atoms and Molecules, where he added on to previous theories of fellow physicist Ernest Rutherford. Because Niels Bohr built off Rutherford's theories, this depiction of the atom is often called the Rutherford-Bohr model of the atom. Another great accomplishment by Bohr was his concept of complementarity. Although a lot less people are familiar with the complementary principle than his atomic model, this theory is just, if not more, important. When you look at the electrons in the Rutherford-Bohr model of the atom, you might think of them as little planets orbiting its nucleus, just like how Earth and other planets in our solar system orbit the Sun. But if you ask Niels Bohr, he would say you're wrong. Niels Bohr first introduced the world to his complementarity principle during a lecture he gave in 1927 in Como, Italy. His complementarity principle claimed electrons and other particles at the small scale of atoms behave under separate laws than things we see in the normal world. Mainly, he believed electrons and other things, like photons, to be both a wave and a particle at the same time. So while looking at our original model of the atom, the electrons would not only be a planet, but also a wave as well. Right now, you might be asking yourself, that's fine and dandy, but what does any of this have to do with cubism? The origins of the complementarity principle, as described by Niels Bohr, has puzzled historians for some time. Analyzing his life, however, some historians think cubism played a role in the conception of the complementarity principle. Apart from being a renowned physicist, Bohr is also a fan of cubism. After moving into a new home in the early 1930s, Niels Bohr bought and displayed this painting in his house. Translated into English, this painting is titled Women with a Horse, a 1912 painting by the artist John Metzinger. As you can see by the geometrically abstract nature of the painting, many of Metzinger's works were involved in the early cubism movement. This painting is specifically tied to analytical cubism. One major characteristic of analytical cubism is the inclusion of multiple viewing perspectives being present simultaneously in the same painting. Metzger even describes this aspect of cubism in Du Cubisme, a book he helped write in 1911. Cubists move around an object, seizing it from several successive appearances, fusing it into a single image, reconstituting it in time. If the idea of having multiple states being present in something at the same time sounds a whole lot like Bohr's complementarity, you'd be right. Historians suspect Bohr read Du Cubisme prior to purchasing Metzinger's painting, perhaps introducing him to the idea of something being comprised of multiple states at the same time. The history of ideas is hard to pin down, so it's hard to say what went through Niels Bohr's mind when he was working on complementarity. However, if this theory is to be believed, the line between the arts and sciences is not as fine as we are led to believe.